everyone. I'm Corey. I am the owner of the Cat's Meow Wreath Boutique. And I thought I would just come on real quick and do a quick video on how I'm going to do a patriotic bow for my mailbox. So I'm not going to, this isn't a video about how I'm going to do the mailbox swag. This is going to be a bow that I'm going to put right in the front of my uh, mailbox post. We have just a wooden post so it's easy to attach. So I want to do, I was going to do that and I thought I would just come on and show you quickly how I do that. So the type of bow I'm going to make is what I call a funky bow with tails. It's just a regular funky bow but I keep part of the tails a little bit longer. Kind of self-explanatory. Um, so these are the ribbons I'm going to use today. They are all from Sam's Club with the exception of this. This comes from Deco Exchange and for the price it's pretty similar to the cost of um, the Sam's Club ribbon. You're also going to need what I use is a pipe cleaner and a zip tie. This is just an eight inch zip tie. I have some wire cutters. I don't think they're wire cutters, but that's what I call them. And just a pair of scissors. So I always line up my ribbon from left to right with how I'm going to use it. Um, so I'm going to use this red and blue plaid first. Sam's Club came out with some really good ribbon this year. So if you guys have an opportunity to go, I recommend it. Okay, so I'm using the Easy Bow Maker. I am not somebody who is gifted in making hand bows, so this is my best friend for my bows. Um, since this is gonna be on my mailbox, I'm going to make the loops a little bit larger than I normally would. So I think I'm going to make them, let's see, seven inches. So my top tails are going to be, I'm gonna make those eight. So what I do is I scrunch them up, give it a twist, push it on through there and make sure it's up there pretty good. I bring this over to seven. Everybody does it a little bit differently. So at seven, give it a twist, make sure I'm still at seven. We're going to bring it on over. I always like to make sure that my ribbon is going smoothly, that the edges are not bent in any way. And what I like to do is I pinch and then I push this down. So I think I want probably 15 inch tails. The bow maker goes up to 12 inches. So I'm going to use my mat underneath to go to about 15. I love my self-healing mat, not just because I can cut stuff on it, but because it does give you that extra ruler. So now what I do is I just go and I make sure I flatten right here at the base. If you can see, I flatten that a little bit and bring it on over just to try to smooth and not have too, too much in the center. So now I am going to use this fun, what to me reminds me of firecracker. This is really a heavy, stiff ribbon. Again, if you can get some of the uh, Sam's Club ribbon, I really think it would be a good thing. I, I have to apologize. I am in my new craft room and I put my mat on upside down. So I don't, I usually have one this way and now it's one this way. So I'm having to do math in my head really quick. So I'm just going to estimate it. Again, I'm going to scrunch it up. Let me move these out of the way. Put these over there. Maybe move this up a little bit. Scrunch this up, give it a good twist. 
push it on down. Again, I try to smooth that out as much as possible and bring it down. So since whenever you do a funky bow or usually any bow, most bows, I should say, you want to have your loops gradually get smaller. Some people do that by an inch each time. Some do it by a half inch. I do a half inch, so I'm going to make my next loops six and a half. Sorry about that, had a cat crawling on a laptop. So we're gonna do seven and a, or I'm sorry, six and a half. I put mine in sideways. I keep my pinky where I want my loop to, how long I want my loop to be. And then just twist it and push it down. I double check, yep, it's at six and a half. And then I go ahead and do the same on this side seven and a half. I pinch the centers, push it down. And now I'm not too concerned about being like measuring exactly. I just use the other one to give me a guide. Again, do a quick little fluff, make sure it's looking how I want it to look. So the next color I'm going to use is this white. It's not the best quality compared to the others that uh, Sam's Club came out with this year, but seeing that this is gonna go on my mailbox, um, it's really, you know, I wouldn't wanna put anything too expensive out there. So this is perfect. And I know it's questionable using white on an outdoor bow, but again, it's going to be on my mailbox. It's going to be a middle layer. So I just wanted something to lighten up these reds and then the blues that I'm going to be using. So I go ahead and start with my tail, my top tail, give it a twist. I'm going to go ahead and hold this down in the center. Go ahead and fold this like so. And again, I want to keep it about a half inch lower, I should say, shorten my loops by about a half inch each time. So this is going to be at about six inches. This is the beginning of a little porch. Well, I don't know. I live in Florida and we have screened in porches that we call the knives. It's not a very big space. It's probably a five by 10, but it's our front porch area. And I am going to be making a, um, first of all, here is my next one. It's a nice denim blue color. But I am going to be sprucing up my front lanai with patriotic decor. So I'm going to be making a nice garland that's going to go over my doors. I have double doors. I'm also going to make, well, I purchased it. It's a cute little ice cream cone. It's made of rattan or wicker. You know, everybody calls it something different. And I'm going to put that in my flower pot out there. I'm also going to do a lantern swag but I'm also going to do a mailbox bow. So I'm going to do some tutorials on all of those if you wanna come back to my channel and watch as I go. Next, I'm going to use, I'm not thrilled that this is a light blue, but I think it'll help lighten the bow up a little bit. But yes, yeah, so if I thought that I would record all the projects that I do and then record how it looks when it's all set up. So hopefully you will come back to my channel and check out my progress and maybe follow along on my YouTube channel. I am new with all this, so 
if you can give me some grace with what I'm sure are going to be many mistakes. But I thought it would be fun this year to decorate my front porch area. And that way I can keep it up until the end of July. And I decorate early for Halloween. I don't know how everyone else does it, but I do like to decorate early. So now what I'm doing is I'm just, I have all the ribbons I'm going to use. I used three one and a half inch and two two and a half inch. You don't have to use five, you can use four, you can use three, you can use seven. All just depends on what you're going for. I did not want anything too busy, only because I'm going to have a mailbox swag on the top that I'm probably going to make very busy. Sorry, let me move this up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 7 8 inch wired ribbon. It is also a royal canvas type. It's, well, full burlap. So what I'm going to do is I know a lot of people, because you want to use this to cover up your mechanics in the center. So how I like to do it is I like to make it a little bit longer so that I can give it a little bit of a curl. I'm going to twist. I do just a couple fingers lengths. Again, I just pinch it so that it makes, see how it's that? I just pinch it in half, bring it over, and then I am going to, some people like to bring this down so they have two. I like to do mine this way. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and Make sure we have everything how we like it, everything looks good. What I'm going to do is because I always put my pipe cleaner in between these two, but on the bottom, but I do it before I use my pipe, or I'm sorry, my zip tie, because I always tend to tighten my zip tie too tight and then I can't get my pipe cleaner in at the end. So that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and just go underneath all my ribbons and lift it up gently because you do not want to lose everything you just created. So then I push it back down. I usually stand up for this. Let me stand up. I go underneath. I have my zip tie ready. And then how I do it is I put my thumb over the top. I have my two fingers, one on each side of these, and I squeeze them before I take it out. And you wanna have a tight grip, but you don't want it to be too tight. If it's too tight, you will send all your ribbons flying. So now what I'm doing is I am sticking the zip tie between my two, my pointer and middle finger and then I'm gonna bring it around. And see how our pipe cleaner is already there. Because I like to, I don't know if I'm going to try to wrap this around my mailbox or just staple it on. Okay, so then you just use your cutters and put this aside. Okay. So now we have all of our ribbons. I like to hold on to the center, fluff it up. I'm going to go ahead and before I get too carried away with this and then have to fluff it again, I am going to go ahead and dovetail my ends which just means you fold it in half, cut from the bent side up to the wire side. Some people do cut from the wire side down, but I just like the cleanness of the cut when I do it from the bottom side, the 
softer side, the non-wired side. And you can make these tails as long or short as you want. Sometimes I do like to stagger the lengths and make them all different. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and I already did that one when I cut it. If you remember, I made the top tails eight inches. I did that so that I could decide when I'm dovetailing how long I really want them. And I think I want them different lengths. It just adds a little bit more fun. I like to keep the back ones though, obviously taller. You always want the ones in the back, your ribbons in the back to be taller than your front ones. Okay. So now I'll just adjust that pipe cleaner and I like to hold my thumb in the middle here and then I just go through and straighten and smooth out all my ribbons. I want to make sure this one is the, in the front. Then when I do the top ones, I just hang on to that pipe cleaner in the back. It gets a little tricky because you want this to be nice and neat. You can always secure this. I sometimes put it on a grapevine or just secure it to something that's sturdy and it'll stay in place. <laughs> about that my dog doesn't believe anyone should be allowed to walk down the street it should be illegal in his mind so I know this is not fluffed to perfection by any means but I like it and once I get it on the mailbox it will be much easier to get the bow to fluff better and then what I do is I just roll these. You can make these as little, you know, you can roll it as tightly or as loosely as you want. And then I just gently do that. Okay, so here it is. Here is my patriotic bow that I'm just going to put on the front of my mailbox. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Just a quick little funky bow with tails. I'm also, again, going to be recording how I decorate my front porch. So hopefully you come back and check out those videos.